Barbarian Zionchek, a man who was once a rising star in US politics, and a respected lawyer in Seattle who was responsible for recalling the incumbent mayor of the city, unfortunately went on to suffer from his mental health later in his career, causing him to be responsible for one of the many scandals of our government. Zajancek was born in Kedi, Austria-Hungary on December 5, 1900. His family moved to Chicago in 1904 before eventually settling in Seattle, Washington. Marion was left with his mother to support him after his father returned to Poland for work. In 1924, Zajancek briefly attended college starting at age 19, but had to drop out due to financial issues. Fortunately, Zajancek was able to return to Washington University four years later. While at university, Zajancek went on to be a successful student. He wanted to be the student body president and earn a law degree. His time in college was not all good, however. Zajancek got caught up in drama of the school's athletic elite when he criticized the use of the institution's building funds. Zajancek was unhappy over the large amounts of money being spent on sports. What happened was that the university recently finished a football stadium in 1925 and in 1927 constructed an athletic pavilion. The school was about to construct a student union building, but Zajancek stepped in and advocated for using the funds to repair the roof of the pavilion building. Unhappy with Zajancek's criticism on how the university managed its funds, finances, the university's athletic elite who went by the name of the W-Men took things way too far by kidnapping Zajancek, assaulting him, and tossing him into a lake. J.D. Ross, the superintendent of Seattle, formed the Citizens Municipal Utilities Protective League in 1930. Zajancek was asked to be the secretary of the organization. When Republican Mayor of Seattle Frank Edwards fired Ross in 1931, Zajancek started a petition to recall the mayor and managed to garner well over the minimum signatures needed. The recall went on to be successful. This event caught the attention of the Unemployed Citizens League. Zajancek becoming the president of the Municipal Utilities Protective League in 1932 suggested that the two organizations align themselves for the purpose of supporting Democratic candidates for the upcoming city elections. After the candidates won, the two organizations supported candidates for elections statewide. One of these candidates was the man himself, Marion Zajancek, who became the Democratic nominee for Washington's first congressional district. With the dissatisfaction of the current Republican administration in 1932, Democrats not only won the presidency in a landslide, but they also picked up several seats in Congress, gaining a majority in the House. Zajancek was no exception. He won his election with 55% of the vote. Zajancek's first term in Congress was defined by his ardent support for FDR's New Deal policies and his advocacy for economic reform. A respected and well-liked progressive politician, Zajancek easily won re-election in 1934 with nearly 58% of the vote. Unfortunately for Zajancek, it all started to go downhill from here. Throughout the year 1936, Zajancek got himself into numerous different scandals. These included getting a speeding ticket in April of 36, which he had to be forcibly brought to court and driving his car on the White House lawn. This caught the attention of a secretary by the name of Ruby Nix, who after reading about Zajancek, calls him up and they agree to go out on a date. Ten days later, Zajancek and Nix get married. Zajancek and Nix went to the Caribbean for their honeymoon. During their time in Puerto Rico, Zajancek received more speeding tickets, managed to get in several car accidents, got into a riot in which he called for the Marines to be sent in to help, and was challenged to a duel by someone he upset. After being kicked out of a dinner party because he lapped up his soup like a dog, Zajancek was recommended to leave for the Virgin Islands, which he did so via a US Navy plane. Eventually, the two returned to the US and New York, where reporters followed Zajancek, hoping to witness any of his crazy antics, and that they did. Zajancek threw a glass at another person in a nightclub and happily frolicked in the Rockefeller Center fountain. After returning to DC, Zajancek discovered he had been kicked out of his apartment. Zajancek lost his temper with his landlady and dragged her out onto the streets, injuring her hip in the process. And an unrelated but bizarrely random thing Zajancek did was when he left FDR a gift that consisted of a bag of containing mothballs, ping pong balls, and empty beer bottles. Zajancek's wife ran away temporarily, likely due to being fed up of her husband's antics. Zajancek was arrested while desperately looking for his wife, but instead of being taken to jail, he was admitted to Gallinger Municipal Hospital Psychopathic Ward, so he could be put on trial to decide whether or not he was insane. 
When asked if he was crazy by a reporter, Zayanchek responded by saying, quote, Either I'm crazy, or those windbags in Congress are. After his wife came back to him, he was admitted to a separate hospital in Maryland. To avoid being charged for assaulting his landlady, Zayanchek escaped the hospital and took off to Seattle. Zayanchek realized his chances of winning re-election to Congress were slim, so he decided not to run again. His mother, however, in an effort to prove to the world that he wasn't crazy, convinced him otherwise. Zayanchek re-entered the race. Tragically, while he was preparing to give a speech on August 7th, 1936, Zayanchek committed suicide by jumping out of the window on the fifth floor of the Arctic building in Seattle. He hit the ground right in front of his wife, who was in a parked vehicle. A note was found on Zayanchek's desk saying, quote, my only hope in life was to improve the conditions of an unfair economic system that held no promises to those that all the wealth of a decent chance to survive, let alone live. Roughly 2,000 mourners gathered in the street to take part in what is referred to as one of the largest funerals to have ever taken place in Seattle. The story of Zionchek is a sad one. Given how poorly mental health was handled in his day, even if Zionchek stayed at the hospital, he would have likely never received a proper diagnosis. One can only speculate as to what caused Zionchek to succumb to his mental health issues. Thanks for watching.